Hello everyone, my name is Ivan Lukačević. I am assistant professor at Faculty of Civil Engineering, University of Zagreb, Croatia, and I'm going to present the paper Numerical Study on Bending Resistance of Cold Form Steel Back-to-Back Built-Up Elements. Together with me, this paper was prepared with contribution of my colleague from Politecnica University of Timisoara, Civil Engineering Faculty in Romania, Professor Ungureanu, and my colleagues from Faculty of Civil Engineering, University of Zagreb, Research Assistant Valcic and Assistant Professor Churkovic. Coal formed steel back to back built up beams are very efficient and attractive structural elements, which, beside material savings and low self weight, can also offer an excellent efficiency in the production process. The connection between such built-up steel components can be easily obtained by traditional solutions like bolts or screws, but the development of the welding processes also leads to the application of solutions like continuous, for example, laser or MIG brazing or discrete, for example, spot welding solutions. The paper concentrates on the bending capacity of simple built up back to back cross sections, SBB cross section, which you can see here on this picture, and back to back cross section, which stitches BBS cross section, uh, and also paper investigating various types of connections, such as continuous or discrete connection discrete line connections using adhesives, bolts, spot welding or continuous welding procedures like mentioned solution of MIG brazing welding. Uh, both type of the cross section mentioned BBS and SBB cross section are investigating using solution with lipped channel section and with plain channel section which you can see here. Calculation procedures according to Eurocode effective width method and direct strength method can only be used for single elements. For built up elements, those procedures could be different because the influence of different connections cannot be considered very easily. However, in practice, the procedure for calculation of the bending resistance of built up back to back cross section consists of calculation of single channel cross section capacity which is then multiplied by two. A parametric study was used to investigate the influence of different parameters. The height of the analyzed section was 300 millimeters with the nominal thickness of two millimeters. In case of lip channel uh, sections flange uh, was 70 millimeters wide and in case of uh, plain channel flange was 88 millimeters to maintain equal uh, area of cross-section. In order to investigate local distorsional and lateral torsional behavior, two different lengths of analyzed beams have been used, 2.1 meters and 6 meters. The length of 2.1 meters should provide local and distorsional behavior, while the length of 6 meters should ensure a common length for beams in exploitation. In the table on this slide, you can see the results of analytical calculations according to Eurocode and the Rextrend method for SBB cross sections based on experimentally obtained material characteristics. The results show a very good correlation in case of flip channels and a certain differences in the case of plane channels. Regarding the length of 6 meters, the bending resistance of plane channels is same as for 2.1 meters since plane channels didn't result in global buckling failure. For numerical modeling within this research, general purpose finite element program Abacus was used. Uh, general contact with uh, these parameters here between webs and the channel sections was used. Uh, support conditions were defined on the nodes at the end of the beam coupled with beam end cross sections as simply supported end conditions. Also, the loading of the beam was defined in these points using displacement control with the rotation of maximum 0.1 radians. Uh, in case of the continuous connections, two different solutions have been used. 
tie type connections between surfaces of the web and tie type connections along upper and lower edge line of the webs. Uh, the discrete connections are defined along the predefined attachment point where connections are applied according to the different arrangements. Geometric and material nonlinear analysis, including the effects of initial imperfections, has performed. The numerical modeling consists of two steps. In the first step, the initial imperfections are modeled by performing buckling analysis, which results in desired imperfection shape. In the second step, the dynamic implicit analysis is used to run the low displacement analysis of the beam, which include imperfect geometry obtained from previous buckling analysis, as well as all contact and material nonlinearities. Uh, each part of the built-up beam has been defined as 3D shell element extruded according to the shape of the channel section, rectangular four-node double curved S4R element, uh, and the global mesh size of 10 millimeters was used. Here you can see the results of the influence of the type of the channel section and beam length. Uh, this figure on the left show the comparison of the results in case of SBB lipped channels and BBS lipped channels with U stitches at the horizontal distances of 250 millimeters for the length of the beam uh, 2.1 meters and tied uh, connections between all elements. Uh, this figure shows the results in case of uh, plane channels for the length of 2.1 meters and two different analyzed solutions, SBB solution and BBS solution with horizontal stitches at uh, 250 millimeters and tied connections. And the results of these uh, figures from these figures show that SBB beams have a higher capacity and ductility in both solutions, lip channel and plain channel sections. As mentioned before, for the length of six meters, uh, the plain channel didn't result in global uh, buckling failure, and it was decided not to take it into account in this parametric study. Uh, this figure below shows the results in case of beams with lip channel and uh, two different analyzed solution mentioned SBB solution and BBS solution with horizontal spacing of stitches uh, 250 millimeters and tied uh, connections between all elements. Influences of the continuous and discrete connections for the SBB lip channel beams and beam lengths of 2.1 and 6 meters are shown in these figures. Continuous tie connections between channel webs result in greatest bending capacity and ductility, while in case of the continuous tie connections only between top and bottom flanges, solution MIG brazing, the results show a small decrease in the capacity and large decrease in cross-section ductility for both analyzed beam lengths. Beam capacity decreases in case of 6 meters, but instead of relatively high influence of the tied connection, to the cross-section bending capacity, the influence of the distance between discrete connections along the beam axis and with the height of the beam is not significant for the both analyzed local distortional and global behavior. Influence of the distance between discrete connections along the beam axis and with the height BBS uh, lip channel cross-section are shown on these two <clears throat> figures on the left uh, side, results comprising the solution of continuous tie connection and discrete spot weld connections between the beam components. The results show that the influence of continuous and discrete connections between channels is minimal and can be neglected. Additionally, local capacity is not affected by reduction of the spacing between U stitches or spot weld positions. Uh, the results which uh, take into account different spacing of U stitches along the BBS lip channel uh, 
uh, beam for global buckling capacity are shown on the pictures on the right side. Uh, from the results, uh, it can be seen that the global capacity could be increased by reduction of the U-stitches spacing. In the case of small U-stitches spacing, the vertical distance between spot welds have a certain influence on the global beam capacity, while in case of higher U-stitches spacing, spot weld spacing doesn't affect the global behavior of the beam. In the case of SBB, plane channels, influence of the continuous and discrete connections can be seen on uh, this first figure on the top of the slide. The results from this figure for SBB plane channel beams show similar behavior like it was for SBB lip channel beams. Continuous tie connections between channel webs and the continuous tie connections only between top and bottom flanges solution, uh, MIG brazing solution, result in greatest bending capacity and ductility. The influence of the distance between discrete connections uh, solution with spot welds along the beam axis and with the height of the beam is not significant but certain decrease in capacity and ductility exist. In the case of uh, BBS cross-section plane channel beams, the result for continuous tie and for different horizontal and vertical distances between discrete connections are shown in these uh, two figures. Uh, the results show that in case of BBS plane channel, local capacity is not affected by increasing the spacing of few stitches or by type of the connection and vertical spacing of spot welds. And finally, we can go through conclusions. The paper summarizes the design procedure for bending resistance of build-up elements, pointing out difficulties in the application of these methods regarding build-up elements and connection techniques. The results show that the resistance of such elements is governed by the chan channel sections geometry as well as chosen solution for connection between beam elements. From the parametric study, it can be concluded that the capacity of the coal form steel back-to-back -back built up beams in a certain cases is highly affected by the type of connections and its spacing. Tight web connections result in highest capacity and highest ductility, but such type of connection is not always possible. In the case of discrete connections, results are affected by the configuration and the number of discrete connections. Thank you.